What is up guys, Maccabee Speed coming at ya. Clean cut haircut because this is the first episode of Maccabee Speed's post felony phase. That's right, if you're just joining us on the channel for the very first time, for 22 and a half of my 23 years basically as an adult, I have been a convicted felon and only recently did I restore my constitutional rights 100% fully in court to become a valid, full-fledged citizen once again. This is an unsponsored review, and my ideas and thoughts about this product are my own. I'm not really here to entice you to go and purchase it anywhere. I did my business with Fox Air Power, but this is not a sponsored review. As you can kind of see by the uh, plethora of ammo that I do have to share with you as well today, it's probably something in 50 caliber, right? It is a 50 caliber, but it also comes in 457, and I did do the due diligence and purchase the extra accessories to test both calibers for you. I should show you this. This was also in the bag, the Leapers uh, Field Canvas bag here. Pretty cool, pretty cool. It's got this little strappy on the back, and uh, there's a zip compartment as well. Other people probably know exactly what this type of bag is, and if you do, definitely do throw it in the comments. But this hat, this bag, gift with purchase when I got this air rifle. Now, this air rifle I purchased for one specific reason. I have this idea of making like a double barrel 50 caliber fish cannon, right? That would be really cool. I've seen a lot of videos lately of dudes using like high powered air spear guns to go and hunt big fish with. And they're all single barrel stuff. So this is an opportunity, considering the fact that it's based on DNA that already is proven to work well underwater with the Defender system, to be a versatile fishing tool with two barrels. Let's get right into it. If you haven't figured it out already, this is the AEA Harpoon. <sighs> What's going on here? Oh, it's the first time I've opened it. This is literally as I, as I opened, as you open it. Typical a AEA foam. In this case, it's sufficient because there's no vertical bolt handle sticking up to, dash, to bash through that thing. Cool, all my personal information. Bunch of extra stickers. Swag, and a choking hazard, that's cool. What's this? Oh. All right guys, check this out. This is way cooler than I thought it was gonna be on the website. Green illuminated UTG micro site. I think you guys are going to really, really, really dig this. And I am happy because of the fact that it is kind of a water resistant IPX7 rating, which is why I got it for the application of using it as a fish site. Bunch of threaded components that I haven't read the instructions on. Super familiar Defender style burst discs here. I think these are the small plastic threaded pieces that actually hold the 50 caliber pellets. Check it out. This is the part number. Wow. These are girthy, dog. These are girthy. I'm very, very, very impressed. I think the one thing that we asked for with the, D the Defender 2 platform was we wanted some more volume in these in these cartridges. And these larger cartridges really seem like they give it to you. You know what I mean? I got the size 13 fingers as far as ring size is concerned, and this is significantly larger. So a 5,000 PSI rated cartridge, pretty cool. Step in the right direction. Cool. So, now how exactly would this work? How would we be doing this? We would have the cartridge in the gun. Imaginary gun, right? Oh, that's exactly what it does. You do have to remove this plastic sleeve here to go ahead and charge the cartridge though. All right, let's check out the meat and potatoes here. This is good. This is, this is aluminum. I did not realize that this whole upper receiver section right here, this whole thing is aluminum. You got your give them one and then you got your give them hell over here. This will fire both barrels apparently. Let's cock it open. Oh, that's slick dog. Does it make a cool noise? Yes. Why do I have no? Do I have to actually read it? Do I have to actually read it? How do I cock this? Fascinating. 
fascinating. So I don't quite know exactly how that works. All right, so despite my best efforts, there was absolutely no way whatsoever I could figure out how to do this on my own without looking at Jim at Texoma Precision's pellet site. So I did go ahead and check it out, and basically it's kind of like the old uh, brake barrels, right? The barrels are used themselves to leverage this thing forward, or in this case, I guess you kind of go like that with it. Definitely keep your hands out of the way of the business end if you've already loaded anything, but I wanted to see whether or not I would have to cock it twice for two shots, or if cocking it once would give me uh, you know, the ability to penetrate both these burst states. Let's check it out. I'm telling you though, my neighbors are gonna be pissed if this goes off. Single shot. Okay, did shoot. Look. Okay. Now, does it go off again? That's a strong pin, dude. That's a very, very, very robust penetration through that burst disc, and it's also extremely consistent from one side to the other. Now that we got that figured out, let's kind of move our way through our review here. Does this go in here? No. Didn't watch the whole video, as you can see, regarding Texoma Precision pellets. These just kind of screw in. I did get the long barrel kit. Maximum power, right? All the power or none of the power? This is what it's going to look like once it's all threaded together, and it's a pretty cool looking package. Just go ahead and break the action, use the barrels themselves, hear the click. It's significantly easier than a brake barrel, like a traditional brake barrel. Once you cock it, that's when you're going to be able to flip it over to safe, but until you actually cock this, you won't be able to put it on safe. Take it off safe, switch it over to give them hell, clicks both of them. Good to go. The other really cool thing about this 50 caliber PCP platform is the fact that you could actually, from what I understand, these unthread out of their 50 caliber bores and leave behind a true 72 caliber bore. That's right, it's basically a 12 gauge that's able to shoot 50 cal. Now that means theoretically, if all the hype I've been given is correct, that this 12 gauge shot shell should fit in this bore. Let's see what happens. That's how that works. Dude, I had my aha moment. That was it. That was my aha moment. It will absolutely accept a 12 gauge air shot shell. How cool is that? All right, now let's get to the meat and potatoes of exactly why I got this thing. I kind of got sidetracked as far as how to set it up and how the basic usage is concerned, but let's get back on track. This guy right here is a very special piece of equipment because of the fact that it has the ability to independently fire two barrels of 50 caliber. Now, when I was walking by a garage sale recently, I saw these guys. And if you're familiar with the air gunning world, this is about $125 to $150 box of air bolts if you had to buy it off of Pyramid Air. And I saw it at a garage sale and I was like, oh dude, that is me, I've gotta make an offer on that. Made an offer on it, got the whole box for 20 bucks. 20 bucks later, I'm ready to go ahead and try a cool theory. I'm like, you know what? What if we used these great Air Venturi air bolts designed specifically for air gun usage already and put a fishing line on them. You have the ability to just muzzle load these. This design already lends itself to putting a reel on each side, right? Why couldn't you have two badass harpoons in your harpoon ready to go ahead and reel in the big one, right? The proverbial big one. I wanna go ahead and take you guys on that journey and show you exactly what it's gonna to take to transform the AEA harpoon into an absolute big fish monster. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple of links down in the description of other YouTube videos that have used air-powered weapons to go ahead and throw spears or throw harpoons for fishing purposes. I think you're really gonna see exactly where I'm going with this. As far as optics are concerned, there's no difference in acquiring a target that's under the water versus a target that's above the water. So I'll use my Ham fist is style to open this and share it with you guys. Include this super dope little stumpy screwdriver that I'm immediately loving. 
got batteries, got rag with it, got a scope cover. Ooh, and it's super little. This is fire. I like this. I do like this. The turn on. Probably needs a battery. I would say it probably was shipped without a battery. But this is very cool. Check it out. Oh yeah, this guy looks right at home on there. Kind of a small field of view here as far as this optic is concerned, but you know what? I'm really a fan of things that are compact on compact platforms. This isn't a full-size rifle. It's not a full-size carbine. It doesn't even have a stock yet. So I definitely think that this size optic fits this platform well, and it should be well suited for a bright environment like a fishing day, right? I think it's gonna be a good thing for us. It's kind of behind the curve on this one because I didn't get it you know, handed out to me as far as one of the initial of the testers but by the same token i want to get this review for you as soon as possible let's go ahead and close this one up and i'll get to the range if you like today's episode give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content like this make sure you subscribe for more with that notifications button so you can stay current on the channel as well as when these videos come out if you really like what you saw today make sure you share it so that somebody else can see it and i'll catch you boys in the next one Oh, nice. That's super.